hello everyone in this tutorial I want us to understand what is post dates post term and post maturity their similarities and their differences for us to understand what is uh, post dated pregnancy what is post maturity and um, the whole spectrum of prolonged pregnancy we need to understand what is a term pregnancy so a term pregnancy encompasses a period from 37 weeks to 42 weeks so neonatal outcomes between 37 weeks and 42 weeks vary so a baby born at 37 weeks and a baby born at 40 weeks and a baby born at 42 weeks have got different outcomes uh, especially in terms of respiratory morbidity so because of that uh, researchers thought to further classify this term because five weeks is a long time so term pregnancy has been further classified into early term full term late term and post term early term ranges from 37 plus 0 through to 38 plus 6 full term ranges from 39 plus 0 through to 40 plus 6 late term ranges from 41 plus 0 through to 41 plus 6 and post term ranges from 42 and beyond so once we get our definition of term correct once we understand that the term pregnancy is between 37 and 42 we are able to uh, extrapolate and say okay a preterm pregnancy would be before 37 weeks but a post dated pregnancy this is when a pregnancy goes beyond the expected date of delivery this expected date of delivery is calculated from the last normal menstrual period and it is at 40 weeks of gestation age so once uh, the woman goes beyond that expected date of delivery beyond that 40 weeks of gestation or beyond the approximate 280 days of gestation it becomes a post dated pregnancy because she has gone beyond her edd she has gone beyond her expected date of delivery now that post dates is not again to be confused with the post term because the post term remember we we're saying post term is beyond 42 weeks of pregnancy on the other hand post maturity is often used interchangeably with post term however most will prefer to use post maturity after the baby is born so usually when a baby is born post mature we look at the characteristics of a baby for example a baby that looks old uh, wrinkled skin uh, thin placenta is very unhealthy the cord is unhealthy uh, there's absence of venous caseosa the venous caseosa is the is the uh, creamish whitish stuff that covers the baby when it is born and the nails are protruding when we see such a baby we say that that baby is post mature so i prefer that we call a baby that has such a diagnosis as post mature rather than a pregnancy that has gone beyond uh, 42 weeks of gestation so there's that there's that uh, interchange of the terms between post term and post maturity but the post term post maturity and post deaths especially the post deaths and the post and the post term should not be confused because the post deaths is a clinical entity that we work with most of the time on the ward so the most common cause of post deaths uh, is the wrong deaths uh, unless a woman uh, keeps track uh, of her menses through a diary or through a calendar or an app a phone app if she does not keep track intentionally keeping track of her debts they are likely to get their debts 
then that's wrong. So the most common cause of post deaths is wrong deaths. The other one is uh, elderly prime gravida, congenital anomalies such as an encephaly, even just a prime gravida, or maybe a personal or a family history of uh, prolonged pregnancies. So there are some tools that can help us with the dating problem. We need these tools mostly because uh, you'll be encountered, you, you, you will encounter this problem often. Uh, you will find uh, that the majority of the women that you're going to see, maybe not the vast majority, but at least 60% of the women that you're going to, to see may not be very sure of the deaths that they had there, uh, th their last period. At the beginning of pregnancy, it may not be such a hassle, but at the end of pregnancy, at the time that you need to decide how and when to deliver the baby, it may become a challenge for you. And that is when you want to have precise dates that you are going to use to deliver the baby. Remember, we have said already that the outcomes are not the same. If you deliver a baby at 36 weeks and you deliver a baby at 42 weeks, the outcomes, especially in respiratory morbidity, is not the same. So you need to get your dates right, depending on the indication for your delivery. In this case, you are not sure if she's post dates or she's she's post dates or maybe the pregnancy is preterm. So these are the tools that you can use. For example, you look at the booking date and the examination on the antenatal record. If she booked, let's say, on 22 May, eh, she booked on 22 May, and at the time of booking, her height of fundus was probably 22. That gives you an idea that on such and such a date in May, her height of fundus was 22. So it gives you an idea to say the, the gestation age, if it was 22, if it, the height of fundus was 22, they, it puts the gestation age at around 22. The date of quickening also gives you an idea of how old the pregnancy is. Uh, and you need to have a technique on how to extract the date of quickening because it is very hard for someone to remember when is it that the first time the baby moved. Eh? Because the date of quickening is a date when the mother perceives the baby for the first time so getting the actual date may be a challenge so for you to get that information you ask them which time of the month let's say you're talking about may you're talking about may the way you get that history is when did you hear the baby when did you feel the baby move was it at the beginning of may or was it at the end of may that gives you an approximation uh, together with your height of funders, together with the first date of booking, it gives you an approximation of how old the baby is. And also, if you are lucky enough to have an early first trimester, trimester scan, that is good enough. That is good information. It is the margin of error in an early first trimester scan is is small, is thin. You know, it is quite accurate in terms of dating the gestation age so when do you deliver when do you deliver a post dated pregnancy once you've made it once you've made you've had your information you have all your information and you made a decision that this pregnancy is post date when do you deliver and how do you deliver the current research advises us to deliver at 41 weeks of gestation because after 41 weeks of gestation the risk for still birth due to placental insufficiency increases the mode of delivery will depend on the other risk factors that the, the mother may have for example if it's a prime gravida with no other condition except for, for post deaths she may be induced with uh, vaginal prostaglandins like uh, like misoprostol now a, a multi gravida who's had a previous cesarean section may have to be delivered by by cesarean section so that was uh, um, our tutorial on post deaths post term and post maturity they all fall in the spectrum of prolonged pregnancy but they they mean different things and they've got management consequences if we don't get 
the terminology correct so thank you for listening and i hope to see you on the next one